Okay, so I had done a commentary on this prior a while back, but the audio did not record. So I took a look at it again and decided to redo it, even though who knows what was said in the previous recording of it, but I figured that if it was captured, that it, I should complete it. So, how to get a boyfriend, find the man of your dreams. The man of your dreams, everyone. And I guess nowadays it doesn't really matter if it's a man f looking for another man or a woman looking for a man. Regardless, we're about to find out how to find that man of your dreams. Because surely they only exist in dreams. But I have a feeling that that's not what this person is going to say. Getting a boyfriend is one thing, but keeping him, that's a whole other story. Hey ladies, I'm Amy North here, and today I'm going to teach you how to get and keep a boyfriend. Now I know this might sound like quite the challenge, but believe me, getting and keeping a guy isn't as hard as it sounds. That is, as long as you know what you're doing. So before I jump into this video, I just want to ask... So obviously this person is a coach, I think. Yeah, some coach. Coach. Coach North. Coach North. Amazing. Because the compass points north, so this person is definitely leading you to the right subscription. Subscribe for more free dating advice. Thanks so much. And perhaps this lovely pendant, the phoenix looks like, or perhaps some other occult meaning. Nonetheless, it's like Ariel, right? The locket that just bashed and stole her voice. And then the, the witch just w used it against her to deceive the man of her dreams, right? So Ariel's, oh, prince, now was being deceived by the voice that the witch took from her and was using in place and muted, made Ariel dumb. She could not speak. So the story goes. So, and look at look at all this stuff, right? Look at all of these other just advice, 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 ad relentless, right? Nonstop. You could spend your whole life smashing and getting just truckloads of advice. Wow. ask that if you enjoy what you learned here today, then please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I promise to keep coming out with get new videos addicted. and dating advice, so subscribe and don't miss out. Now, let's get started. Getting and keeping a boyfriend starts with you. What I mean by this is that it's important to be in the right course, mindset before getting together. That, with... She keeps doing that gang sign, right? Her gang sign. It's a mudra of some sort. Just power up, power up. This person is just so oblivious. She's she can't can't wait to get singed by the fire. Oh, she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. My man, my dreams is coming. He's coming. He's ah, oh, and I'm doing it all. I'm doing it all because I'm doing the work. I'm doing the inner work to just call him in. Someone new. To do this, you have to believe that you are worth every minute of a man's time, and that any guy would be lucky to have you. Confidence is key, and even if you're not feeling like a million bucks right now, fake it till you make it. As a <laughs> Whoa, a coach says fake it till you make it. Is that what a coach would do in a sports team? He's like, okay, Billy, I know you, you, you're 
you're not quite good at this, but just fake it. And then you'll make it, right? Said no coach ever. Usually they're like, ah, you suck. You're benched. Sit down. All right. All right, other Billy. You go out there. You're the star. Don't make this this other bash Billy. Make us lose. No, no, no. We're going to bench him. And sure, yeah, you know, it's called sportsmanship competition. He'll he'll want to be like you, Billy, the real star. So, sucky Billy, take take heed to the star Billy. Be more like star Billy. Don't be a loser. Wow. Train harder. Train harder. Just day and night. Just do, breathe. Live. Breathe. Eat. Sweat, blood, tears, and sweat, blood, tears, sweat, blood, and tears, sweat, blood, and tears. Yeah! No pain, no gain! Oh, what is going on? Woman, you've probably struggled with insecurities and questioned what it is that men find attractive. But after talking to many men, I've discovered that there is no such thing as one ideal woman. What one man finds attractive, another does not, and vice versa. Sure, some men find certain traits attractive, but it's Yeah, except pornography. And all the lustful ways of mashing your brain have made sure that men look at women with lust. The end. So, sure, some men say, oh, I like these ones, I like those ones. But usually it's just lust, lust, lust. And people are like, oh, what's wrong? There's nothing wrong with lust. It's just my primordial state. I'm just a reptile inside, so just leave me alone. I just want to fornicate with everything because I'm a primate and i'm looking for the survival of my bash progeny of my kind but it doesn't matter that then the female will just carve the living life out of her if she so chooses and i will support her don't worry it's still survival it's still survival people because it's survival to just carve the life out of you that grows even though it's instinctual to just go and impregnate every woman that's out there what a shame Cheesy as it sounds, it's what's on the inside that counts. This means that being drop dead gorgeous has less to do with the color of your eyes or your dress size and more to do with having the right attitude. There are many ways to be positive and feel good about yourself. The most obvious ones being work out and dress in a way that makes you feel good, but really it goes so much further than that. Does it? For instance, being relaxed and playful, believing in yourself and focusing on your best attributes. This means that instead of thinking my thighs are too fat, uh <laughs> So she's going to say something like, dress the part. You know, you got to just listen to the witch's advice. And sure, your body type will just d determine what you wear. And use big belts if you have the, uh, the a, a pear curved. If you have a pear-shaped body, just wear belts and bash, wear moo-moos. Wear big drapes of cloth that will just cover everything. And some man will find you attractive and this and that. And if you're skinny and you have no curves, well, just bash. Put things that will, will give the appearance of illusion. Wear heels. Wear stockings. Wear the whore's outfit, says the witch. Hmm. Amazing. Amazing. I think my thighs are perfectly normal and they get me where I need to go. Once you start to see the best bits of you and change your negative thoughts to positive ones, you'll be radiating with sexiness. Because, Other little tips. Because that's the point, people. Be sexy all the time. Be sex, 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 And then all of a sudden people are like, oh, why are men looking at me like this? Oh, I feel accosted everywhere I go. I'm being undressed. People are undressing me with their eyes. Oh, oppression, oppression, oppression. Wow. Satan is laughing. It's like wearing sexy underwear, practicing your strut, making smiling a habit, and perfecting your posture will also take you far here. It's actually amazing how much something as simple as shaving your legs can do to boost your confidence. <laughs> so take care of your body and treat it to these little pleasures. Oh. The next step to getting and keeping a boyfriend is letting go of baggage. Now you may have convinced yeah, yourself- Yeah, letting go of your old bash relationship that just bash defiled you. And all the previous other ones because, oh, they weren't good enough. Or, oh, I loved him, but then we just broke up for no reason. And I've never just found another one like him. And now he's, now he's married or now he has a girlfriend. And, oh, I want him back. And all this bash. So she's saying, oh, kids, just let go. Just sit down, get hemorrhoids and bash, swim around in the abyss. 
and just cut ties. Get that spirit, just a ethereal scissor, and they're just cut, 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 Not realizing that you're shanking yourself. That you're already over all the crappy relationships you've had in the past, but it's important that you're honest with yourself here. In order to open up your heart to someone new, you need to let go of any feelings of heartache or resentment that you may have bottled up inside. Oh. The truth is, nothing that happened in the past is going to impact your future unless you allow it to. So she's just dancing around the command of forgive. As the Father has forgiven our sins through his Son, Jesus Christ. And this person is like, what? What? No, 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 no. What? Jesus Christ? No, 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 no. It's all about this phoenix rising from my thorax into my gullet. And then I say what I mean and mean what I say. And inside, I'm just bash, ping-ponging ideas left and right and how to manipulate this new boyfriend that I'm going to get. Whoa, I can't wait. If you let past problems, experiences, issues have power over your present and future, then you're going to be stuck reliving the same sad story again and again. Oh, who knew? Sure, bad relationships can leave a nasty taste in your mouth, but if you let these experiences live on, they'll work 100% against you if you're trying to find love. Hence why you need to let go and move on. If you're trying to find love. If you're not, or you're trying to find some pseudo love, because that's all it is. She's really talking about the love of the world that turneth on you on a dime. It doesn't careth about you. It just wants pleasure. Just like the little pleasures that she was mentioning before about shaving your legs and then all of a sudden being like, whoa, I feel so boosted. I feel so elevated. I feel so sexy. Or the other smash that just thinks, oh, I'm going to let it grow. I'm just going to be bash cave woman. And then, I, then I'm going to find a caveman to just friction against my leg and say, yes, I adore your bash hairy legs. You don't have to shave your legs. That's just oppression. That's just oppression, oppression, oppression. Hygiene, what a joke. Not even a thing. You can be as dirty and bash on. Don't even care about your body. And that's what people believe. They boast and say that they actually care about their bodies, but then they go around and abandon their bodies and basically offer it to do as I will. That has no bearing on any foundation that remaineth temporary bash things that fleet and go like whispers that never happened loves that came in and out and just left you stretched out and just begging begging to be understood and you're like no why why did this happen to me why do I always attract losers and this and this and that well could it be because men and women both are losing they're being just over plowed over plowed in and out just bash defiled for for what some sort of control and liberalization of thinking that wow this is my lifestyle and i love it so much but sure it's not always great but i just do the best and hope for the best wow if you've never been in a serious relationship which believe me so many of us haven't then you may feel the need to let go of other things you've been bottling up Perhaps you avoid insecurity. Make any man obsess over you? Get these free ebooks. Flirty texting. Cheat sheet. How to make him loyal for life. <laughs> Internet dating success, success secrets. So apparently man is just a bash tumbleweed. He has no clue and is the woman that has to reel him in. Right? And apparently the man can has to recognize, wow, the power and authority of this wonderful goddess witch that's just doing all the tricks and tri of the trade to just reel him in. And he's supposed to respect her and play the game and just be like, wow, you sure played hard to get, but you made it so worth it. Because now I'm just loyal for life. Whoa. What is she talking about? Or you don't feel attractive. It could be that you've always been a bit of a loner or had a rough upbringing and don't feel deserving of love. Even if you're just an average woman who's been content most of your life but is yet to find the one, decide who it is that you want to be and let go of anything that doesn't serve you. When you let go, you create space for something better to come along. Once you've tossed... Right, so just bash, cut, swipe in the knees 
all the men that you could ever have. And eventually one will pop up that you'll be like, well, I'll keep this one. But by that time, you're probably 50 or 60 and you're like, well, I might as well settle now. Decide your baggage and are feeling good about yourself. It's time to get out there and meet your dream man. When it comes to meeting a man, oh, there yeah, are many different guy. places to do so. <laughs> to name a few, you can meet a guy through a mutual friend, at the pub, walking your dog, online. However you choose to do so, it's important that you come across as a happy, outgoing person. Come, did she, wow. Let's, no, we don't need to listen to that again, but she's like, make sure to come across as someone go lucky, you know, full of just vigor and just so positive. Yeah. What, and all these bash, I'm sure all, if you really look at the doctrine of what all these bashes have to say is just empty promise. Fake it till you make it. She said it. So it's a bunch of people just putting it off a facade and thinking that they're being authentic. Whoa, amazing. If you meet someone and jump right into how terrible your day has been going or vent about your shitty coworkers, then your negativity is really going to push them away. <laughs> Instead, it's important that you show them your best self and give them a little taste of what life- I think she did a no-no when it comes to the new age philosophy because negativity isn't real. There is no wrong. All right, it's just you. Oh, it's just you, and you're just trying your best. But she's like saying, well, if you let people bash negatively affect you, you're going to bring this into the bash people that you meet and this and that. Well, uh, what? There's no, aren't you going against with all these other bashes? Let's say, um, it's just positivity, positivity, pause, 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 pause. If with you would be like. Again, the point is to be cheerful and positive. Once you do meet someone and start going on dates, there are some things to keep in mind. For starters, it's important that you're prepared for the date so you don't keep them waiting. Being punctual is a sign of respect, so be sure to give them a good impression. While you're together, keep the conversation light and pleasant, and remember that <laughs> men love to be around women who make them feel good. Oh. Ask them questions to get to know them, but don't interrogate them. This isn't a job interview. For more tips on how to have the perfect first is, date... I mean, or, or, I guess people are just that bashed. They have no clue how to engage with the other. To the point where they need coaches to just, oh, what do I do? And then you have other bashes that are like, okay, I'll pick up lines and this and this and treat it like a business. Treat it like a business and you have to keep it in, in, engaged and you have to close. You have to close and bash and bash and bash, bash and get laid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone just go looking up for pleasure. Come on. And maybe you'll find a nice person and, well, you could stick around with them for a little while. Until you decide to say, eh, you know what, it's not you, it's me. I'm just going to go out there and bash because I love it so much. And the other person is like devastated. No, you told me you loved me. No. Or they believe it and they're like, yeah, okay. Yeah, you were getting, I was, nah, this, it, it was getting stagnant. You're right. Let's just go out there and find other people. Right, pop on over to www.coachnorth.com and watch the free video presentation. Now. Let's say you've been on a few good dates and things are starting to get serious between you and the man you're seeing. How do you get him to commit to being your boyfriend? To do so, it's important that you let him feel like he's chasing you. Oh. Since men are born hunters, they thrive on winning you, which is why it's right. so important born that you hunters. let him chase you. So often, women make themselves available, and when they do, their men lose interest. To get him chasing you, there are a few things you need to understand. First is knowing that you deserve the best because when you do, you deserve show, the best, no. right? And just put on a like, just lie to them, basically. Oh, oh, I never do this. Oh yeah, I. Oh no, I never, I never bash, give it up on the first date. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm a good, whole. I'm, 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 I'm relatively just naive, and I'm just the girl. I'm the girl next door. Oh no, 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 no. Sure, I've had relentless boyfriends. And sure, I've had relentless members of bash things in my body, but no, 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 it doesn't matter. Because, because, because it's all good. I forgive myself, and I'm going out there releasing all my baggage and all my filth, and now I'm going to open myself to bash, get my heart broken again. Yeah, that's it. He'll come chasing. Second is following your guy's lead, meaning that if he's casual about dating you, then you're still free to keep seeing other people. 
Keep in mind that unless he's calling you your girlfriend, you're still a single lady. When single he gets ladies. the sense that you could have anyone you want, the fear of losing you will give him the push he needs to make the move. Just be sure to leave the ball in his court and wait for him to bring up the future of your relationship. So the threat, the threat of me going and smashing another bash is good enough. He'll come back. To avoid mistakenly chasing him, pull back everything you're throwing at him. The communication, availability, accommodations for his schedule, the whole shebang. The whole Don't shebang. initiate plans with him, text him, or be the first to call. You should only respond to his advances. This may seem counterproductive if you're trying to win him over, but if you're constantly contacting him, then he's never going to have the opportunity to come to you. Once he does come to you, don't give in quickly. The better you are at holding off, the more he will pursue you. At the same time, this- uh, Yeah, all along the other bash has like 20 other women on the go and he's like, ah, what do I feel like today? Nah, this, this, this bash thinks that she's getting me to go after her because she's waiting off and playing and all the tricks. So I'm gonna play with her a little while too. So the same bash, advice that she's giving uh other bashes are giving to men and they're kind of telling each other what the other one's doing and so they're all doing out there thinking that the other person doesn't know what they're doing oh what a mess but of course it's just too good it's like the county fair you go in there all the blash blazing colors and cotton candy and bash all the games that you can play that are rigged whoa it's so great and then people call it a casino and they, whoa, you, big, you win big and you can count cards. But eh, it's harder now, so you have to be a genius. So all these people think that they're geniuses out there, man. They're just so savvy. And they can close. And they can open. And they can close. And they can open. Just do what that will. Yeah, and she's telling you right there. This doesn't mean that you should ignore him or reject his date proposals. It just means that you're making yourself a little bit harder to catch and that'll give him the chance to do what he desires most, oh. to chase you. When you do see him, keep in mind what men crave, and that's respect, admiration, appreciation, a challenge, and to be desired. Whoa. There are obviously- Five things she mentioned, then that's all, that's it. That's all men want. Um, right. Because most men would just satisfy with just getting laid. And then at the woman, it was like, bash, treating him like crap. He's like, well, the sex is so good. I'll put up with it for a while. And then he'll realize, ah, she doesn't respect me. Oh, no. No, there's no such, there's no respect of persons in the world, surely. It's just out there, a, just a, a facade, a, a mask that people pretend that people actually care and that people respect. No, but only as long as they get what they want. As long as they get what they want, because as soon as they realize that what they want is not being fulfilled, then they'll go out there and smash and bash, get angry and bash, throw fits, start arguments, start fighting, causing jealousy, this and that, rubbernecking, this and that, and eventually bash, dissolution. Obviously, many other things he wants, but those are the big ones. To let him know you respect him, show and tell him. Just be sure not to bow down to him. Oh. To admire him, tell him honestly the things you like about him, and be grateful when he does things for you. Don't bow down to him, While it's him, important though. to appreciate his efforts, make it known that you can and will walk away if he doesn't live up to your standards. Wow. Knowing he could lose you at- And the woman's standards are always, they're always shape-shifting. The strange woman. Her thing, her, 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 her mind is unknowable because she's just like a cloud. Just bash, disappears. And it reappears and goes, oh, so one day it's rainy, another it's not. And you're like, yeah, that's the difference between man and woman, don't you know? No. What a shame. But any time, we'll keep them working hard to keep you. Plus, when something is hard to get, men value it more. Even if he knows you want him, show him too. Men want to feel desired, and when he doesn't feel wanted by you, it can really take a toll on his confidence. To keep him feeling good about himself, flirt with him, tell him that he makes you happy, and that you feel lucky to be with him. Just don't overdo it or you'll seem needy and that itself will interfere with his chase. Once um, he's your boyfriend, the there are some key tips for keeping him committed. For starters, men want to be with a woman who is decisive and know what she wants. If you're the type that relies on her man to choose everything from where to go for dinner to what to wear on New Year's Eve, then he's either going to get bored with your indecisiveness or become annoyed by it. Instead, have opinions of your own. Make decisions and express yourself. After all, your man fell for you, so show him how strong and independent you can be. 
Oh, so only after he's committed will you show him that you were actually lying before where you were just letting him make the moves in this. And now that he's committed, you're like, Pff, I don't have to listen to you, you bash. I'm a strong, confident woman. Just leave me alone. I can do whatever I want. So, I mean, this is double-minded at its best. Allurement. The mousetrap. Because once you're in, it's like the Chinese cuff. You can't get out. Being reliable is another great way to keep your guy happily committed, so let him know that he can count on you. Every successful relationship requires an unspoken promise to be there for one another. So if you have a habit of making promises you can't keep or saying things you don't mean, then he's going to have a hard time trusting you. Be a woman of your word. As always... <laughs> oh my goodness. So before she was saying, just pretend fake it till you make it, and now she's like, now be honest. Now make sure you keep your word and all this bash. Wow. This is astounding. Astounding. Be appreciative and remember that a simple thank you means a lot to your man. When he opens up to you, listen and give him your undivided attention. Encourage him to do his own thing and be open to his sexual needs and desires. <laughs> Praise his efforts, go on dates, and let him know that you trust him. Keep things fresh and try new things together. The point is to keep your relationship fun and exciting. A common mistake that so many... So that's the point of having a relationship, to keep it fun and exciting? Hmm. What about being there, becoming one flesh, worshiping in one spirit? For the man to be the beacon, the beacon, the rock. A beneficiation unto the Lord. In truth. For he will not lead her astray, nor put up with any deceptions. And the wife, too. The woman is basically in charge of the man, and the man in charge of the woman, so to speak. The body of the man is to the woman, and the, and the body of the woman is to the man. But no. Just keep yourselves segregated and just keep it fun and exciting and get him addicted and how to retract your ex. And one tip that will get you bashed. Hmm. What many women make is they lose themselves in the relationship. To avoid this, be sure that you have a life outside of him. In <laughs> fact, it's proven... This is, this is just the key, the key to the deception, right? Have a life outside of him. Wow. That's just the dualistic, double-minded bashhood that people have come to believe and live out. That the love that you're supposedly looking for, supposedly once you find it, you can still remain outside of it. What a joke. And no wonder it's not real love. It's just conditional love or meaning satisfying all the bash aspects of your voidness that you think you can fill with things like appreciation, validation, listening, this and that and this and respect and this and that and wah, wah, wah. No. Anything that is outside of the love of the father is bashed. Anything that's outside of fulfilling one's life to edifying the glory of God and what our lives are here for, given to us, for we did nothing to receive our lives, yet we treat them like as though the world owes us everything and we must just manipulate and just control and bash just organize and make sure that what makes us feel good sticks around and what makes us feel not so good we just bash it out that's what satan does uses you up chooses you up and spits you out and then just bash picks up another one bashes it in his mouth until all the juice is gone and then see you later Sucking all the life out of you.
And all while you think you're being used for the common good. And for the future. And to the infinity and beyond. To the stars and nebulas of Neptune and Saturn. But first the moon and Mars. Because we have to keep, we have to play catch up to the to the breakaway civilization. Oh no! Oh no! 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 Then that your man will actually miss you more when you're not around. So go out with your gal pals. Sign up for that. Yeah, go out with your gal pals. Get bashed, right? Blackout. Or pretend that you're just drinking them responsibly, but really you're doing this to just validate yourself that wow, I'm still sexy. And then, sure, other men will come and flirt with you, and you'll entertain it for a while. And then you'll say, oh, no, 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 I have a boyfriend. And all these other bashes will laugh and chuckle and be like, ha, 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 ha. You still got it, Kathy. Oh, wow, look at me. Look how great you look. Wow, have you been working out? Wow, your teeth are so white. How do you do it? Oh, my goodness, your skin is so tight, and there's no wrinkles in it. Wow. You got to show her with us that secret. And she's like, yeah, I just kill babies and drink their blood. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, me too. Me too. Me too. Me too. What are we doing? That yoga class or take a weekend to yourself. Trust me. You'll have his attention <laughs> when you return. <laughs> look at them. They're like, ah, look, look, ah, look at us. Wow, we're so amazing. It took us three hours to get ourselves together to just go out for another three hours of bash drinking and just headaches and bash hangovers the next morning. But no, it's just all in good fun. <laughs> because I have my lone life outside of my own bash boyfriend who I manipulated into thinking that I'm so great. And sure, I cheated him on once, little one, but it wasn't really cheating. It was just flirting, and it is. And sure, he put his thing inside of me, but hey, it wasn't. It didn't mean anything. Nope. No matter how angry or upset you may be with your man, you should never scream at him, belittle him, or call him names, especially if you're in public. Wow, so all the things that she said, don't belittle him, belittle him scream at him, or shame him, blah, blah, blah. That, that's what all women do. And in their own manipulative, slithering ways. Why? Because they can. And that's how they make sure the man sticks around. Because, obviously, she said that because she's a coach. And she knows that that's what women do. So she's like, yeah, don't do these things anymore, people. But she knows that they do anyway. Because who knew that it works? And men and women both have been defiled to the point where they don't even recognize where the abuse is coming from. Because guess what? The abuse to them works. The abuse is just so amazing. But you'll just bash label it growing and enlightenment and bash letting go of resentment and bash just discovering your own mirror. And just realizing that, hey, there's no such thing as wrongdoing. It's just, just labels. It's just labels. And sure, you can come and just try your best with every man or woman that you wanted to try. And bash, just bash in the bed. And bash sweat. And bash just get all sweat and slippery with. And it's okay because at the end of the day, you did it your way. And that's all that matters. The only way to have a healthy argument is by keeping it private. So keep your business your own and learn to forgive and forget. Always make time to be playful with one another. Laugh lots, tease your man, wrestle him, and let your guard down. Sharing these moments... Yeah, fart, fart with him in the same room. Ha <laughs> ha that's how you know you're a good couple. If you could sniff your own farts and just laugh at it. ...with your guy will not only connect you on a deeper level, but it'll also make him realize how lucky he is to have a friend in you. Be thoughtful you got and a friend in me. To, you, I should have just watched Toy Story and not watched this video. And I would have come out with the same bash, just contorted advice. Find him how much he means to you by surprising him from time to time. And always make him feel like a king. Because even the manliest of men need reassuring at times. Oh. Well, that's all the time I have for today. But if you'd like to learn more about how to get and keep a boyfriend, then again, hop on over to coachnorth.com. So she said, don't, treat him like a king. But before she had said, don't bow down to him. <laughs> wow. 
So how do you treat the king? How does one treat the king? Because surely we're not all kings and queens, so to speak. No, there's only one king of king, one lord of the lords, the highest of the highs. Who knew? So how do we live up to the only standard that is his righteousness instead of trying to figure out our own relative standard of how we fit into others' perspective of what we should be doing for them and them for us? <sighs> Worshippers of the flesh, seekers of the light that deceiveth, for Christ Jesus is the light of the world, the light of men, which you do not see with your eyes, but through faith. And this person is making you believe that the chase is a fleshly chase and that you're in control. Who abandons the partner of her youth? forgets the covenant of her God. For her house sinks down to the death and her tracks to the departed spirits, none who go to her return or negotiate the paths of life. What is this talking about, right? You say, whoa, 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 why does this, what? No, 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 this is just misogyny and bigoted, bigoted, bash thought oppression. Women, when you have be put down forever. It's because you deny the word of God that you would say such things. For she has cast down many wounded. Yeah, many strong men have been slain by her. Her house is the way to hell going down to the chambers of death. But she who lives for pleasure is dead even while she is still alive. And it's not to say to blame the woman, but it's the idea or the notion, the truth, meaning he who commits fornication, meaning is cheating on the king of kings with other idols, with other bashes. With other things that aren't the truth. And all those paths leads to death. For surely man and man was told to not eat from the fruit of knowledge of good and evil because the day that he would, he would surely die. And so what does the serpent do? He beguiles the woman. Because Genesis doesn't say that God told the woman the same that he told Adam, but he had told a man. And we know that Christ is the head of man and the head of Christ, God, and the head of woman, man so Adam was responsible to have divulged everything that the father had told him to Eve and he did because we see here that when the serpent was tempting Eve she knew that they shouldn't eat from that tr tree from the from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil So Adam had done his part, but yet the serpent made sure to make the fruit look good for her to eat. Shapeshifting. Manipulation. Seeding doubt in the way he asks the woman. So what does what does what does God tell them? He tells the serpent, And I will put enmity between thee and woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. So women and, and, and the serpent are at enmity with one another. 
He unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and th thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. But, of course, this is all foolishness to he, for them that perish. For, for those who are perishing. Because they have said in their heart, I lack nothing. I only need myself and my own righteousness to get by. God? God? God is dead. God is old news. He's archaic. Surely people didn't understand the science that we do now and we can just do away with all this bash right no wrong the word of god is alive so in Genesis, right, he tells the woman, right? I will greatly multiply thy sorrows in conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. And it was not Adam who was deceived, but the woman who was deceived and fell into transgression. Women, however, will be saved through childbearing if they continue in faith, love, and holiness with self-control. if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. So, even though both women and men transgress, because Adam ate from the fruit too after Eve presented it to him. So, even though man transgressed, there is a way out. God provided the way out for man and his fall. And he had clearly stated that's what the prophets spoke of and the whole purpose of his word. Prophesying that the Messiah would come unto the earth, to the world to save us in our sin. And everything that unfolded throughout what we call time and generations but for some how i mean satan is out loose he's loose again and deceiving the nations again with the same old lie that you would become as gods attempting to synth synthesize the knowledge of good and evil to how you say it is and how you bestow judgment and say, well, I'm going to do this now because eh, I didn't like that other thing before. And so everybody's out there in the relative bash judgment and all the while boasting, don't judge, don't judge, don't judge. But of course, they're the ultimate judge. And why? Because God loves judgment, but he says, my people lack for, for lack of knowledge, meaning discernment. Seeking the darkness instead of instead of abiding in light the light of Christ again that you do not see with your eyes but through faith the truth that is sharper than any fleshly sword getting to the heart of it all and of course There's another passage that speaks about Matt. Uh, yes, this one. Truly, truly, I tell you, you will weep and wail while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. A woman has pain in childbirth because her time has come. But when she brings forth her child, she forgets her anguish because of her joy 
that a child has been born into the world. Amen. So everybody, everyone that says, Oh, we don't want a woman have to suffer so much. No, man. Man was also told, so, right? And unto Adam said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and has eaten, meaning disobeyed the word of God that he was told unto Adam, and instead took heed to what the woman right, said, Oh, the fruit is good to eat, and has eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field, right, like a beast. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Right? And it, interestingly enough, right, so uh, through uh, woman was a transgression instigated through by Satan, but also through woman came the heavenly man, the Lord. So there is redemption in everything that God has told us is and the resolve of it all. How wise his knowledge. How unknowable the ways of the Lord through the Father. But no, it had to be about just tips and tricks to just trap a man, right? Because it's no longer about the, 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 the covenant between a man and a woman, which is holy, but just how to just friction that bean and bash, make things gush out that just somehow give you a, a temporary euphoric state and mistake that for pleasure. And mistake that for the, oh, Tantra and this. It's just sex, man. It's sex energy, man. It's all sex energy, man. Don't you know, man? It's just, just sex, 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 sex. So come out of the flesh, meaning walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the flesh perishes, yet we find ourselves in the experience, quote-unquote, of life in the flesh. For we are dead in sin through the flesh, but are alive in Christ unto life eternal. So what are we going to, what are we going to, how are we going to stand before the Lord? If our whole lives we just scoffed and ignored the true promise. For everyone knows in their heart the covenant that men and women are here to embody and the care and the love that which that expresses and that the family, nobody would be here if it wasn't for a man and a woman bearing forth a child in what is called a family. But no, now family means a thousand points of light. You name it. Family is whatever you make it. It takes a village. And this and that and that. Wow. No. It is time. It is time to stop listening to the foolishness of man. And take heed to the wisdom of the Father. For surely in his way is salvation. To the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Who died for our sins. And rose again in life. Through the spirit of the Father. And has set the foundation for us to build upon. And edify 
unto righteousness the glory of God. And not seek to build earthly things, you know, our own edifice, our own pride in the flesh that will just turn to dust. For we came nothing w unto the world with, and we surely will take nothing with us from it. So for those who are seeking, you know, a, a girlfriend or a boyfriend, what are we doing? Feel sexy all the time and then complain about how just, oh, I'm not a sexual object. Leave me alone. I'm allowed to be sexy and, and also not a sexual object, right? Just confounded. Just bash, split, contradictory bash notions that just leave you polluted and just lost. Men and women are here for a reason. It's not a mistake and it's surely not an accident and surely not a cause of some bash, just mystery, survival instinct. No. And it's all coming to a resolve. For the word of God liveth. Unchanged. The same today, yesterday, and tomorrow. God willing. For our souls might be required tonight. So we are not guaranteed tomorrow, but yet we are constantly given the opportunity to recognize the folly of our way, to repent. And all these coaches and bash gurus will say, well, yeah, you know, recognize that, yeah, you make mistakes, but hey, listen, that's the whole point. You're here to make mistakes. And then just bash, make little tweaks and bashes there, there, there. And all of a sudden, you're successful, says the devil. Okay, we'll end it there. <laughs>